Oh, hey. God, that was terrible. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the video. Today is going to be a Q&A slash vlog kind of day. I realized yesterday that I never really like made an introduction video of who I am. I always talked about like my developer story, how I got into it, what kind of tips and things that I'm doing throughout my journey, that, that kind of stuff. But I never really like, again, told you about who I am, what my hobbies are, what I'm interested in. So today, that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. I asked you guys on an Instagram story story yesterday to ask me some questions about like what you want to know and today I'm going to be answering them and I'm also bringing you on the day today is May 19th we're on a Wednesday so it is a work day today I will be working and then sprinkling in some of the questions here and there so without further ado let's get into it all right, so one of the questions that I sparked this idea for the video was make a video about your tattoos and and that's what I'll start out with is a video about the tattoos and I'll show you guys the three tattoos that I have and then po probably I'll talk to you about like one of the other ones that I want to get in the future. All right, so starting with the very first one. So this half sleeve right here is the very first piece that I ever, ever got. This one was dedicated to my grandpa after he passed away. I really wanted to get something that symbolized him as a person and as a human being. So here on the main piece, I don't know if you guys can see that because I really don't have a viewfinder right now. It, this is a crane. He loved cranes. He, had al he always had artworks of cranes around the house when I used to live with my parents. So that was the main piece that I wanted to kind of uh, be the highlight of it is this huge crane that wraps around the arm here and then on the inside I got a lotus and then cherry blossoms all around the all around the crane to symbolize his love for gardening he really really loved to garden he was always outside planting things and watering things he was always you could always find him in there so that's something that I really wanted to incorporate here as well so that is going to be the first piece it's very very meaningful to me and I people always you know was like uh, do you want to add anything to it do you want to create a full sleeve out of it? But honestly, no, I kind of like just leaving it as it is. It's it's a very meaningful piece to me and I don't want to touch it for that reason. The second piece that I got is this guy right here. So this is a foo dog on my ribs. I actually got this when I was in Thailand of 2018 with my two best friends. Um, we usually, you know, we've, we've made a thing so where that wherever we travel, we are, we're always going to get a tattoo there. So this was when I got in Thailand. What this symbolizes is again, protection mainly, you know, uh, I put it on my ribs because this is the most vulnerable spot that I have right now as far as like tattoos goes. And in, in, in like Asian culture, the food dog is very much about like protection and loyalty. So like that's the main reason I got the food dog. It was the main thing on my mind. And if you guys can't tell, I only want to get Asian art on my body. That was one of the things that I wanted to do. There's a lot of symbol, there's a lot of symbolic meanings behind Asian art. So that's kind of why I have them. And then the third and final piece that I have is this guy right here. This is my first full, full sleeve and I'm really pumped about it. I still got to go in and get it touched up. There are some spots that um, I pulled ink out of and things like that, but I still love the piece. In all, it is a snake uh, intertwined with a tiger. The tiger symbolizes my brother. He actually is a tiger for his zodiac sign. That's that'll be him right here. The snake, there's no one in this snake that's a snake in my family, but here's a kind of the story that I created in my mind as to why I have this on my arm. So the meaning for the two is they have very, very common meanings. So the tiger and the snake can be seen as very, very ferocious predators. And on the surface, that's kind of what I was going for, but there's an underlying meaning to them. I wanted to get two of the most vicious creatures that can kill to kind of just remind myself to always keep moving forward and to just fight for what it is that I want in life. So I can always look down and just see that. But the underlying meaning of the two are also very similar in the fact that the tiger and the snake in Asian culture, Asian tattoo culture is they ward off disease and bad spirits and bad luck. Uh, the aids in protection with yourself as an individual and as well as a uh, family protection. So the tiger being my brother as well, it kind of intertwines really well that, you know, the family protection side of things, they're very much in this piece um, as a whole. And that's kind of what the meaning is behind this tattoo. And now as for uh, future tattoos, I actually have a really good idea. My mom is a rat and my dad is a dragon. So I wanted to get a piece where the dragon is flying out somewhere 
and the rat is somewhere on the dragon riding and uh they're they're moving somewhere together and i wanted to have my whole family there on my body as a as a again a symbolic meaning so that's going to be my future tattoos my future tattoo idea but this is going to be uh an overview of the art that i have so far i swear there's something about getting coffee in like a to-go cup that just makes it that much more caffeinated. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like amped up every time I get some from like Dunkin' or Starbucks. We're gonna answer the next question, and that is how long have you been on YouTube from Nima underscore sad74? I have been on YouTube since September of 2019 or October of 2019. I'm pretty sure that's when I started my YouTube channel, but yeah, I've been on here for just a little over a year now. Now, granted, I've been doing like my coding content and like vlogging here for a little over a year. I've been making YouTube videos ever since I was a little kid. Uh, fun fact, I used to make like call of duty montages halo 3 videos and skits because i was a huge fan of red versus blue rooster teeth so i would always watch their like machinimas if you guys remember those days like the old machinima days on halo i used to do that quick scoping montages i was very very into that so i was consistently putting out gameplay videos and things like that very very back in the day as a kid and took a small hiatus i was really really into it i don't know why i stopped i should have kept going but theoretically i've been on youtube for multiple multiple years i've always loved content creation but for this specific stuff on the channel that you see now I have been on here for a little over a year and don't plan on stopping anytime soon I love creating content for you guys and I love just doing what I do I get to document what it is I do I get to talk to you guys get a little bit more you know personal with videos like this where I get to answer your questions so keep them coming I love doing this kind of stuff for y'all and yeah YouTube game is it. I I'm just getting started here to follow up with that question shiva mr codes hopefully i said your name right is it a good time to start a tech channel who focuses on software development skills absolutely any time is great to start i do not agree with anyone who says that that is saturated or that it's a bad time any time is a good time the the only limiting factor there is you and when you want to start so i don't think that there is a bad or good time to start your channel whenever you feel like you're ready go ahead and start it and just give the people what your two cents on a topic give the people your thoughts on something and where you are in your career and or life like you could do anything with the tech channel right as long as it pertains to tech or whatever it is you want your audience to know and associate you with then absolutely go for it right like i started my channel on a whim because i wanted to start making youtube videos and instead of documenting them documenting my journey on instagram solely i wanted to do it in a video slash audio format on youtube so come up with an idea or or a persona that you want to be on YouTube and start the channel. It's always a great time to do it and I'd love to see more content creators come through and start doing the things that we do. Another one that I find very, very interesting before I get right back into work is what did you want to do before being a dev? And that's such a good question. So interestingly enough, I actually wanted to be a dietitian or some sort of sports nutritionist before even thinking about going into the IT or coding realm. I was very, very into dieting and nutrition and sports. And I really wanted to be in a world where both of those kind of coexisted and the sports nutrition was exactly where I wanted to be. And so, you know, my first, I guess, declared major in college was a diet dietitian or a, as a dietitian slash nutritionist. So there it is for you guys. I'm still very, very interested in that kind of stuff. And if you guys know me personally, I geek out over nutrition, supplements, things like that. And I get really, really heavy and deep into that kind of stuff. And I'm always experimenting or playing around with different kinds of foods, different kinds of diets to see what's more optimal for my body and how I can perform at a higher level when it comes to just dieting itself. So very, very interested in that still. But it, if I was to do anything beforehand, like before being a dev or before being an IT, it was probably going to be as a sports nutritionist. All right, guys. So we just got some work done. It was a little bit productive. So it is 2 p.m. right now. I'm going to go heat up some lunch and then we're going to answer a little bit more questions. So let's get to that.
All right guys, so I've got some lunch here, just some salad with some chicken thighs with curry seasoning all over them that I made last night. So eating leftovers essentially, still sipping on the coffee. I'll also be editing during my lunch, but let's answer some questions again. From Instagram, one big one from Jen, Gentry GR, I don't know how to say your name. I'm really sorry for the names. Why did you change from your old job into coding? How do you keep yourself concentrated? So really good question. One of the big things why I changed my job was there was no growth in IT support. As I was moving through IT, I, you know, like halfway through the year when I was at the office, I noticed that like it was just, I was really unhappy with where I was. I didn't really like the job that I was doing. It was super, super repetitive. And I felt super unappreciated with the work that I was doing. As you know, it's very, uh, customer centric. So, you know, you're giving a service to essentially everyone in the office and it just didn't seem like the work that I was doing was even valued, appreciated or acknowledged at all. Not that I look for that kind of stuff, but you know, I didn't feel like a human being at the office and it wasn't great for my mental health. So that kind of spiraled me down into like what it is that I actually want to do with my life. Do I want to keep doing this? Because at the end of the day, if I do get promoted, I'm just doing it at a level two now, which means even more work with doing something that I genuinely don't like to do and what's the point of doing that so with that being said I decided that I'm going to go into coding because it seems like something at the time where I could build something apply myself and actually learn new things that's exactly what intrigued me into it and why I wanted to do it so literally during my lunch breaks during off time during the weekends that's all I was doing I was creating content and I was coding and learning new things whether it was HTML CSS JavaScript or whatever it was and building projects with that that's exactly what I was doing to answer the question of how I was keeping concentrated I just kept reminding myself that I am not happy right now I need to get myself out of this hole in order to like really stay concentrated on that I needed to develop a system to do that. So I really made it a point that at work on my short breaks or on my lunch break, I was learning code or on the weekends, I was doing nothing but learning code. I had to sacrifice a lot of time with my friends in order to learn whatever I was learning at the time. So in ways that I was keeping concentrated, it's very loose, but like that's exactly what I was doing in order to stay concentrated to get to where I wanted to be was envisioning myself at that moment and understanding that right now is not where I really want to be. Another question from Jovene underscore designer. Did you graduate with degree? If not, how did you get in this field? So I did not graduate with any degree. I did not finish college. For those of you guys who don't know, I pretty much left and dropped out of community college a year and a half in. I just didn't like it. I didn't know what I was doing in life and I needed to find a sense of direction. So I dropped out and I started working at a computer store. From there, I worked about a year, a little over a year at the computer store, networked and then got myself into a contracting job doing IT support and then from IT support, found I didn't like it, and then moved ultimately to this coding gig that I have now. How I got into this role is uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of networking. I would uh, I would credit those three things right there to how I really got into this space, especially the networking portion. If it wasn't for a really good friend of mine that got me into this position, it's exactly what it was. I networked my way, I grinded my way there, and I showed my skills. So for those of you guys who want to get into this field, really just put in the work. Like you have to have projects in your portfolio, make yourself known in the community, network a ton, and eventually your time will come. But that's essentially how I got into this space. And it just proves to a lot of you out there who are also debating on whether to get a degree or not, that it's entirely possible. Sure, it's a lot harder getting into this space as a self-taught developer or self-taught in anything. You may not seem as credible without a college degree, but a lot of tech companies now, especially startups and smaller companies are no noticing that self-taught devs are huge assets right now. Make use of that, leverage that, and just become a huge asset to those companies. It's underscore me underscore isam underscore ma says girlfriend or software engineering. And to my answer with that is, I mean, you should know, software engineering. 
No, but for real, like, it depends on the person, it depends on who you are. If you can manage the both, that's fine. I'm not saying you can't have both, because plenty of people do. I would if I if I did, just as of right now, I don't have a girlfriend. You know, to each their own. You can balance the both, but if I would suggest that if you are definitely going into the space, trying to get into the space, I don't know if, you know, it, again, it depends on the person, how well you can manage the both. But for me personally, I don't know if I could have done it with a significant other in the picture. I would have just been too distracted and wouldn't know where to put my time. That allocation of time really does come with a huge thing of balance. So if you can balance the both, then do both. But for me, I couldn't do it. Now that I'm in it, I don't. There's not a thing of like, can I balance the both? I definitely could make time for having a girlfriend as well as being a, an engineer. So teach their own to answer that question. And then last one before I finish my lunch and then get back to work. We're gonna be going to the gym later today. So I'll be answering more questions there. We're gonna go for a heavy clean today. So stick around if you wanna see that. But last question before I head back to work is Caleb.Taylor.735 asks, any interest in SOC or cybersecurity in general? So really interesting question. I've always seen cybersecurity. I've always known of cybersecurity and been very interested in it. I think my curiosity and interest uh, comes a lot from I, doing IT support. We had to work a lot with some of the security engineers and making sure that the employees there were following uh, specific protocols, ensuring that passwords were secure, ensuring our network was secure and that there were no loopholes or backends that people can get into get in through, uh, you know, the, there was constant things of updating firewalls and things like that because there were a lot of servers at the office that I worked at. So I've always been very curious about it. I'm not opposed to learning about cybersecurity or getting into it. I just think that that would be more into the DevOps realm if I were to go that route from the engineering side of things. And I know a lot of people do do that. They go from so uh, software engineering into the DevOps realm where you kind of do both. Either you're doing CI, CD stuff or you're doing a lot of security stuff. To answer your question, I'm very curious about it. I don't, I think it's a very necessary thing that we need in the tech space. And a lot of people should be very, very educated in terms of security in general, whether it's maintaining good, maintaining good habits with securing passwords and accounts or internet passwords and, you know, firewalls and protocols at home. It's things like that, that's very, that a lot of people need to be more educated on. And I think that is a really good space to get into if you are leading more in that route. All right, that's gonna be it for questions for right now. I'm gonna finish this, edit a little bit, get back to work, and then we'll head out to the gym and I'll answer more questions there. I'll see you at the gym. Justin, are you feeling good today? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, look at that sex man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just got back from the gym, uh, try to go for a PR. On the cleans, uh, I think I maxed out at like 260. My max all time is like 295. So we just have those days where you can't hit the max and that's okay. Worked out right after, had a good time. So that is that, but off coming out of the gym, I will answer the final questions that I've been asked and, and end the video here. The one question that I was asked, actually there's two questions. So the first one is how much can you lift? And I guess it really just depends on the lift. So first is the clean, uh, clean and jerk is 295 is my all time max. Bench press I think is 225, back squats 355 and deadlift is 455 I think. Um, those are like general, generally around where the numbers are for my lifts. And then the other question 
from Sarpreet13 underscore is why and how you got into CrossFit. And I think it's a very interesting story. So I think in 2017, around February, my brother, to preface it, had been going to CrossFit for a couple months now. And he's been telling me to start it, but I just was not having it. I didn't believe in it. I didn't want to do it. Uh, I was all about the going to 24 hour fitness and then just, you know, working out there. So I didn't really want to do it at all. And then uh, he tricked me somehow to going into the gym. He was like, you don't have to work out, just come in. And then sure enough, the coach that was there coaxed me into doing it and then the rest is history so that's how I got into it and then over time I started enjoying the workouts enjoying the lifts learning all the new things so I just got hooked from there and then have been doing it since 2017 so I think that's like what over over four years now I've been doing it and uh, it's been great I really like it uh, if you guys haven't tried it I would endorse you to just give it a shot take away all the stigmas and things that you think of CrossFit and just give it a shot so that is going to do it for the Q&A thank you guys for all the questions and watching the video if you guys enjoyed this or have any other questions you want to ask me put them down in the comment section below and i will try to do my best to connect with you guys but that being said that's going to be it for this video i'll see you guys on the next one peace